chapter 8 verse 11 but if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you it says he that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies that is the life that brings power that is the life that makes healing available to quicken means to change the state of operation it means it gives your body another life the life of your body is in the blood. But when the spirit of life quickens your body, it doesn't function again by blood. So there will be, that means diseases can no longer stay in your body. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. That's the life of God that dwells inside of you. And tonight you are here because you will experience that life. If you believe it, you shout a big amen. amen. This night there will be healings. There will be deliverances. There will be miracles. Because the life of God is at work in this place. In just two minutes, I want you to lift your voice and ask the Lord for something fresh to come upon your life today. Ask Him for something new. Lift up your voice and table your expectation to the Lord. Lord, do something in my life. I came that I will not go back the same. Engrace me. Empower me. Let there be a surge of your power in my life. May I make contact with your presence. Let there be a drastic change. Are you praying? Don't look around you. Focus on the Lord and pray. I tell you, something is going to happen in someone's life today something a testimony will spring forth you will see and know that the lord is good you will experience his hand his power his grace like never before there's about to be a mighty move of the spirit in this place Sharabatale Barakosia Ripete ke pala raza vida hasora Menso prete, menso prata, raza bala hataya Venke perra dosita, ila shabanda prata kela Jesus, 
Let chains be broken tonight. Let burdens be lifted. Let yokes be dismantled and destroyed. By the power in the name of Jesus. Let there be a turn around. Let there be a shaking in the spirit. Let something fresh. Like the dew of heaven rest upon your life. That you will never be the same again. That you will never be the same again. Somebody who is hungry. For a move of God in your life. That you will never be the same again. manifest in this place like never before there's somebody whose destiny will experience a change and a turn around in the name of Jesus Christ now just give me your attention a bit we are going to do something prophetic we are going to shout the name of Jesus 21 times listen just listen when it's time to shout you will shout just listen to me okay you see, the miraculous follows instructions. That's what God told me to do before I teach. I'm sorry for those who will not be available at this time of the service. We are going to shout the name of Jesus 21 times in intervals of sevens. Alright? When I call you to shout, you shout. Now this is what the Lord told me. The Lord said, embargoes will be lifted from the life of people. Every evil load that the enemy has placed on your life or your destiny, this night, as you make that shout in the name of Jesus, it shall be removed forever. 
Then number two, there are evil deposits. Things that God has not planted that is existing in the life, in the bodies and in the destinies of people here that will be uprooted. Do you believe that? How many of you are ready for God's power to move through your life in a moment? I want you to, I want you to make up your mind this session there's going to be a mighty move of the power of God. There's going to be a shift. And when we are done, we are going to take testimonies, okay? Before we even start the teaching, we are going to take testimonies because there will be instant miracles. Are you hearing me? Some of you will have visions, have revelations where certain things will happen. We are going to take all that testimonies, uh, testimony before we get to the word tonight. Are you ready to make that shout? Father, we place an anointing on this shout. Like the shout that brought down the walls of Jericho. As your, sh your children raise that shout of the name of Jesus. Let every embargo of Satan upon their life be lifted. Let evil deposits in their lives, in their bodies, in their destinies that you have not planted be uprooted. Let every spell, every enchantment, every incantation, every curse, every reproach of darkness that is around and about their life be dissolved and destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to make that shout? Number one, shout Jesus. Jesus. Shout it number two, Jesus. Jesus. Number three, Jesus. Number four, Jesus. Number five, Jesus. Number six, Jesus. Number seven, Jesus. That's it. Chains are breaking. Chains are breaking. Chains are breaking. Chains are breaking now. I see the angel of the Lord lifting things from the shoulders and the back of people. That embargo is lifted. Help that lady there. That embargo is lifted. It's lifted. It's lifted. It's lifted. It's lifted. It's lifted. Are you ready for the next set of seven? Number eight, shout Jesus. Jesus. Number nine. Jesus. Number ten. Jesus. Number eleven. Jesus. Number twelve. Jesus. Thirteen. Jesus. Fourteen, Jesus. Fifteen, Jesus. Sixteen, Jesus. Seventeen, Jesus. Eighteen, Jesus. Now hold on. This last three shouts, there's going to be an eruption of fire here. Listen. Anything that looks like delay in your life will be broken. Are you ready for the last three shouts? It was the shout that brought down the walls. The power of God is already doing something here. It was the shout that brought down the walls of Jericho. The Bible says that God is gone up with a shout. Psalm 47 verse 5. God is about to move in this place. Every spell of witchcraft, every network of witchcraft around your life will be destroyed at this shout. Every yoke of delay will be approved. Some of you don't need to wait for miracle service. Your time is now. Are you ready for the last three shouts? Number 19. Jesus. 20. Jesus. Shaka parata kate. Sekete parata. Da parata kosia parata. Lord, let your power move in this place. From the left to the right. From the front to the back. Are you ready for the last shout? Chains will be broken. Bodies will be lifted. That embargo of hell will be lifted from your life. Every network of witchcraft manipulating around your life will be dissolved by fire. Number 21. Jesus. Rocket, 
In the name of Jesus. Lift your right hand, please. Where you are, just lift your right hand. My God, the anointing is going to move very strong right now. I take authority against every network of witchcraft. Every satanic manipulation of household wickedness around your life that what is buffeting you is around you and you don't know in the name ataka sapa lepa paruta shapata i release fire right now in the name of jesus let that network of witchcraft be consumed let the powers of hell that's right let it be destroyed let it be destroyed. 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 I set them on fire now. In the name of Jesus. Every spell, every incantation, leave him there. Leave him there. When you bring them out, leave them there. Every spell, every enchantment, anything that was spoken against your life or your destiny, anything that was spoken to anything that is connected to you, to work against you. Marado shaka parata kete, ipa parata koske parata, ipa rataka. I release fire from the throne room. I release fire from above. I release fire from above. I command those, those powers of hell be destroyed now. Amen. Be destroyed now. Amen. Let the spell be broken now. Amen. Let that enchantment be dissolved now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That's right. That's the power of God. Bring them out, those that are under the power of God, just bring them out. I still want to pray. Put your two hands before you, please. There are at least 14 people that God will touch right now. Ushers, you should know your job in this kind of meeting. Anything that has tied or crippled your finances. Listen. Listen, very soon we'll do a teaching on financial dominion. And one of the things I will show you when we get to that series is the warfare dimension of wealth. There are spirits assigned to cripple, to steal, to waste the, the resources of people. Even when you make covenant practice, you give, it doesn't come back. You sow seed, nothing happens. There are spirits at, at work. And God is about to arrest them. Stretch your two hands before you. Now just be silent. I just need the strings now. Just stretch your two hands before you. As your hands are stretched, yes. I'm seeing fire on the hands of people right now. I'm seeing fire. I'm seeing fire. Any chain of the enemy that has locked your finances, your resources, that's where I have them. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, help that sister. Let that chain be destroyed now. Be destroyed now. Be destroyed now. Help that bring them out. Be destroyed now. Be destroyed now. Be destroyed now. Any spirit that has been sent to steal from you, to waste your resources, I arrest them by fire. I arrest them by fire. I arrest them by fire. By fire. By fire. I bind them with chains and with fetters of iron. 
I set them on fire now in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that attacks your productivity, whatever you do seems not to prosper. Or you apply for jobs and you don't get any headway. You don't get any opportunity. Any, I'm, I'm making contact with your hands right now in the spirit. Let that force of limitation right now be lifted from your life. Be lifted from your life. Be lifted from your life. Listen, I'm going to count seven. When I count seven, I want you to shout Jesus and place your two hands on your head. Now listen, just follow me, this, just follow the way this service is. I want to pray. There's something called a mark of disfavor. Are you hearing me? Listen, now, part of the people that God will deliver here, if there are people who experience cobwebs or spider webs, Sometimes you are just going on your own and you, it's like you are caught up with spider webs or something. You will be delivered now. That is, that, is a, that is a manipulation. That's actually witchcraft. That means that there are human agents involved. That is a manipulation of the enemy to keep you limited and stagnant in a place. That's one. Number two, there are veils. This mark of disfavor that I'm talking about, it, ex it, it exhibits itself as veils, as coverings. You are there, but they are not seeing you. You are there, but when it's time to favor, they will look for somebody else. You are there, but you are invisible. You are visible, but it looks like you are invisible. Every good thing will always escape you. That's a mark of disfavor. It will fall down from your life today. 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 Now stretch your two hands before me. Father, I place an anointing of fire on these hands. And in the name of Jesus, every mark of this favor, every satanic fail, every satanic, in fact, there's going to be deliverances, marital delay, there's going to be deliverances now. Every mark of this favor, every fail, every satanic covering, any seal of darkness around your life that makes you invisible to help, invisible to good things as your hand comes on your head by that anointing that is resting on you let that mark be deleted and destroyed let it be deleted and destroyed in the name of Jesus at the count of seven you shout Jesus and place your two hands on your head one two three four five six seven shout Jesus I cross that mark I command that veil be destroyed. Be destroyed. Yeah, help them. Help them. Hey, hey. My God. Help them. Let that veil be destroyed now. That cross be uprooted and rolled away now. Be uprooted and rolled away now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and pray in the Spirit. 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 Shaparata Kadela Bahas, Lepata Parata Kusuba, Preteka Parata Kapa, Zaprata Kate Preteko Suba, Leparata Patia, Ipa Parata Kosos, Esha Sotokasta, Shaparata Shakuri, Repanda Koska Patabana, Bahatos. I hear the chains falling. I see the chains breaking Please lift your hands Now, I take authority against ancestral limitations Causes, yokes, spells That as a result of covenants in your lineage Covenants that were made, transactions that were made with the kingdom of darkness I come with the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus Christ those covenants are deleted right now 
and I command those ancestral chains, ancestral limitations, those yokes, be broken now. Be broken now. That's right. Be broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ, wave your hands and give the Lord praise. Worthy, you are worthy. Now listen, just listen, just listen. If God touched you during the course of the ministration, you had a vision or something, or you felt the power of God, or something happened to you, or if you were healed, God told me there will be a lot of healings. I want you to step forward quickly. Quickly. We will take the testimonies today. Let's follow what the Spirit of God is doing. As we worship right now, there will be healings of different kinds. If God touched you during the course of the prayers, maybe you had a vision or you felt something happen to you, please step forward. Don't be ashamed. Step forward quickly. Let's seal your testimony right now. Please find a way. Get, get them and interview them quickly so we can get that meanwhile god is healing people i told you you don't need to wait for miracle service next sunday god is healing right now are you hearing what i'm saying every devil of affliction is living your life now whether you are here or you are following online every devil of affliction is living your life now i said it's living your life now god is healing people here hepatitis is being healed Arthritis, arthritis is being healed right now. As I'm talking, you can even start checking yourself if you came with an affliction. God is healing people right now. I see somebody, I see about five people with headaches. It just disappeared right now. Now, now, it just disappeared. Check yourself if you confirm, if you confirm that God has touched you or healed you, step forward quickly. We'll take the testimonies right now. We declare healings in this place in the name of Jesus. God is healing eye conditions right now. God is healing eye conditions right now. Every form of glaucoma. In fact, I don't know if there's something called acute glaucoma. God is healing it right now. And I'm also hearing conjunctivitis. You should have been following us from all through, you know, miracle service of August. You will discover that God begins to mention the cases to me as it is. God is healing that right now. Right now. Pains around the hip and the waist. In fact, there is a lady you are dark in complexion something just got pulled out of your waist now behind your lower waist uh, your your lower back your waist i just saw something pulled out and you are healed you are dark in complexion god just healed you check yourself in the name of jesus wave your hands and give the lord praise every pain of any kind is living right now even children are being healed right now in the name of jesus christ if God has touched you, just come forward quickly. Maybe you had a vision, something left you, something happened. Any kind of experience you had in the course of the... I didn't say sit down. Just keep standing, please. Please come forward and let's take the testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Lord of Lords, we worship you. Let's sing it together. Worthy. You are worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords. You are worthy. Oh, worthy. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, King of kings, Lord. Those who the power of God came on and they had to bring them out here. 
if you had any experience or anything whatever it is that you felt or whatever you experienced if you were brought out here because you were under the power of god while i was ministering please step forward quickly let's take your testimony god is doing something for every testimony there will be a replication of the same because the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of jesus right for every one testimony there is a replication some of you the testimonies you hear you may not be needed for you but you know somebody connected to you that needs that as a testimony as it is shared it is replicated in their life king of kings lord of lords we worship let's worship him together word is saying word you are worthy lord you are worthy has been healed just now cough strange cough especially tightness of the chest god just healed you now check yourself there's a release now on your chest there's somebody god showed me a vision this afternoon and based on what i saw you are light in complexion you're not dark i saw pains around your mammary gland you know what you know what i'm talking about for women uh -huh. I saw paint and where I saw it looks like your right your right mammary gland whether it's a pain or it's a growth it is lifted now yeah. check yourself I saw you in that vision you are not dark you are light in complexion I saw pain I saw, I saw something in the spirit and I know that is pain anytime I see it it's lifted now you are healed in the name of Jesus. Look at all these testimonies. Can we clap our hands and give God praise? You see, from now to the end of the year, almost every service is a miracle service. Are you hearing me? Uh -huh. Yes, let's, let's take the testimonies. You can be seated, please. Just be seated. And let's watch the devil being humiliated by the power of God tonight. If you want to shout or rejoice, don't pretend to do it. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Papa, sir, this is Hannah to Huseni. Yes. While the shouting of Jesus went on, she said she felt fire in her, in her belly, like her instant, intestines would gush out. She felt fire in yes, her belly. Burning sensation, and her body was shaking. Yes. And every time she saw a vision of enlightening, and so she believed she has been delivered. She saw a vision of enlightening. Yes, that is deliverance. That is deliverance. And I declare that God will arise in your life in this season. He will bring deliverance. And that lightning like you sh she saw will, will come upon everyone that is an enemy in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is done. Come my dear, let me pray for you. Let every orchestration of darkness leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help her. In Jesus' name. Yes, next testimony. Sir, this is Anne Solomon. The same experience as the shout of Jesus. She felt fire on her lower abdomen. Fire on her lower abdomen. Yes, sir. Anything that God has not planted in your body, I declare again, it is uprooted. It is uprooted. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Next, please. This is Pastor yes, Enoch. Enoch. Yes. Yes. Um, he had a dream, I think last night, yes. of a bull, some bulls trying to attack a child. Bulls. And, yes. Anytime you see bulls in dreams, that's an attack from the kingdom of darkness. That's what he says in Psalms 22. He said, the bulls of Bashan have attacked me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Anytime you see that in your dream, that's an attack. You need prayer at that time. Yes, and what happened? Yes, sir. So they, they succeeded in taking the child away. But when he came for the service, while the prayer was going on, like a vision flashed open and he saw the repetition of that dream. Okay. But this time around, the boot came again, but there was an angel with a sword that stood hey! against that child. Stand on your feet. I declare in the name of Jesus every attack around your life may the angel of the Lord be released to smite the enemy and I declare be delivered from that attack now in the name of Jesus Christ be delivered look at that be delivered from that attack now in the name of Jesus shout a big amen yes sir be seated please be seated three straight visions happening Yes, the, the second one he saw like in a dark house there were altars, all kinds of altars but while we shouted there was a blast there was thunderings and everything scattered then the third one let God arise and everything that he has not planted around your life be scattered right now as you are in this service the power of God descends in your village in your family, in your home wherever they are every altar of darkness be destroyed now Shout a loud amen in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. <laughs> God is doing also something. on the same shouts out. Yes. A veil was torn. A veil was torn. Too, yes. Every covering of darkness is removed from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And also a financial explosion. A vision of a financial he explosion. He saw a vision of a financial explosion. Yes. Receive it. In Jesus' name. Yes. Yes, sir. This is Sister Neno Sibanus. Yes. The Holy Spirit just brought to her vision the dream she had some times back. During the course of the shout? Yes, sir. Yes. Of some elderly people that held calabash and standing opposite hey, to her dad. Village so, powers. All of a sudden, the calabash Somebody say village fire. powers. They are real. But what is more real is the power of God. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. At the and course of the shout, the calabash caught fire and she literally felt heat. At, uh, on her right hand, hand. Yes, sir. it is destroyed in the name of Jesus. We take authority against every omen of witchcraft. Come, every omen of witchcraft, of ancestral yokes, shrines, powers of the shrines. When I count to three, I want you to shout the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, at the count of three, may fire and thunder descend on those shrines. Descend on those altars. Descend on those omens of darkness. At the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Be seated. Yes, sir. This is Sister Esther Samuel. Yes. After the shout, you made mention of keys. That's specifically lower back pain. As soon as you mentioned, the pain just disappeared. And she received a healing. Give God the praise for that. Back pain, lower back pain healed. In Jesus' name. This season you must testify. I declare over your life in this season. Every attack of the enemy to silence your testimony, to silence your voice. It is lifted by the hand of God. And in the name of Jesus from this night till we come for miracle service everyday testimony becomes your portion may you have a reason to celebrate God every day in the name of Jesus yes yes sir this is Mrs. Rita Nelson yes healed of neck and arm pain and the Lord showed her a vision of an animal that looked like a gorilla being born that's a demon spirit 
Where is Alpha? I think we need to praise God. Oh. Come and stand. Come and stand and get ready. Huh? Just stand and get ready. Once I give you the sound, I, I, we, need, we need real praise. Are you hearing me? And when you are dancing, make sure you are stamping on that, that devil. She saw a gorilla. That's a demon spirit. Not really a gorilla. That's a demon spirit. And what happened to the gorilla? She said. Burnt down. Burnt down complete. Yes, oh, I like the way God is doing. I declare that God arise in this season for you. And let fire consume every enemy of God around your life. Every devil that will not let you rest is made to rest in peace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is this her first time? Okay, she's been here. Yes, okay, any other thing? No, that's it. Okay, God bless you. It is done. Come, let me pray for you, ma. And I declare, hold my hand. From today, be released. Breakthroughs upon breakthroughs. The fire of God is strong on her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I think we should celebrate God small. Let's have two minutes of hot praise. Let's just dance before we continue with the testimony. While we are dancing, things will be happening. Are you, are you, are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Stand up on your feet and in the next two minutes, I want you to dance off every chain and every shackle of, any, of the enemy around your life. Yes, go ahead, sir. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a shout. We call him Ebu Bedike Jehovah. Ebu Bedike. Play, though. This is listen, listen to me. Listen, just listen. This is highly prophetic. Are you hearing me? If a prayer will not procure that miracle, a praise can do it. The Bible says God is gone up with a shout. That means every time you raise your voice in a shout of praise, God arises. And the Bible says, Let God arise and let his enemies be what? Scattered. Just sit down for a minute. Let's take more testimony. We will stand up and do that dance again. Alright? Just make sure you are alert. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that before this service is over, let there be financial miracles. It will hit you on every side. In the name of Jesus. Yes, let's get more testimony. Papa sir, this is Susan Emmanuel. Yes. She had this headache that has lasted for 10 years. Yes. So when she came into the service, the headache was there. While the worship was going on, it looked like it increased. And it started going down to her body, her chest, down to her The pain started spreading. started spreading around. But when you 
declared that we should shout Jesus 21 times. The first one dealt with the pain in the stomach. Okay. The second dealt with the pain in the chest. Yes. And the third dealt with the pain, pain in the head. head. And now she's completely whole. Ten years headache. Every affliction in your body, it is uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. I say it is uprooted in the name of Jesus. Shout a big amen. For 10 years. 10 years, sir. Come, my dear. That devil is a liar. I want you to hate oppression. The devil will stop at nothing to ensure that people are oppressed. In the name of Jesus, we declare you free. No more affliction. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Celebrate Jesus. Yes. Papa, sir, this is Magdalene. Mark. Let me hear. What's... Is that Micah? Yes. Yes. Come. He had a leg pain. Him. And he said when you prayed. He had what? A leg pain. Leg pain. Yes. Okay, head. Head. Okay, okay in his head. head. Where's his mother? I'm interested in this because on Tuesday I think I did a prayer for them and all of that. Is it the same headache issue? From that Tuesday till now? Uh, following the service life. You have now. Yes. You were at home following the service yes. life. So I saw him. He was praying and literally speaking in tongues. So he said, "Mommy, my head has gone." I said, "I have come back." The first miracle is that he was he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And the second one is that the headache left. Yeah. Now, this is a, this is actually a condition that has led them to a psychiatric hospital. Come, my boy. Come, come. How long has he had this issue? How like how many years? Since he was born, he has been convulsing because of the, the headache. headache. Yes, sir. I'm I'm aware of this issue. In fact, they've had to visit a psychiatric hospital, I believe. Yes, sir. Again and again, he's been on medication. I prayed for them for him on Tuesday, and according to the testimony, it still lingered. But why they were following at home? Anyone that is following online, may the, may your miracle reach you where you are. I think we should dance for this miracle. Where, where are you? And then apart from the healing, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Some of you, some of you, if you knew God at this age, by now you'll be flying. I want us to dance for the next two minutes. Hot, consistent praise for this miracle. Go and sit on my seat. Hey! The devil is mad and I am glad. The devil is mad and I am glad. Come on now.
of the declaration I want to make. Every stubborn condition around your life. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have taken communion, you have been anointed several times. It seems not to respond to all the solutions. This service, in the name of Jesus, it is arrested. I said it is arrested in this service. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and take your seat. Since he was born. All right. Father, we cause this devil never to return again. We seal this body with the blood of the Lamb. And we declare from today he will walk in divine health. May God use you when you grow older. In Jesus' name we pray. Take him to his mom. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. Wow. The testimonies I thought it would reduce is in, increasing the more. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's hear just two more. Let's hear two more. And then after that, we'll take the rest next Sunday. Okay? We'll take all the others next Sunday. Just two more. Meanwhile, God is still touching people right now. In the course of the praise something just happened some of you may need to be checking your phone all through this service for miracle alert check your emails for job opportunities things are just dropping the bible says let all the people praise him i think it's psalm 65 right i said then the earth will yield our increase look for that scripture for us quickly god is moving in this place are you excited tonight Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Magdalene Mark, she had a CS. She, she gave birth to CS. And since then, she, she had, had a CS. Yes, she had a back pain. Okay. Of it. She gave birth to CS. Yes. And because of that, she had a back pain. A back pain. Yes. For how long? Since, um, ever since I gave birth, I've been. How long? How long now? One year, seven months. One year, seven months. Yes, and what happened? Yes, sir. While the prayer was going on, the back pain left. If you know what it means to have a pain. One year, seven months. I want you to clap your hands and give Jesus the praise. So you don't feel any pain? Even, even the, before the prayers, I've been feeling You the were pain. feeling the pain feeling before the, the prayers. Pain, yes. And now what happened? <laughs> Completely <laughs> gone. Yes, In the name of Jesus, it is permanent. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Return to your seat. Clap your hands and give God praise. Yes. Papa said, this is a striking testimony. Yes. She had a side pain. A side pain that has lasted for some years now. While she was coming also, she has her eyes. She can't see very well. So she I couldn't don't see. Yes, in one what, of which eyes. eyes? Please come, you? sir. What, what uh, case is that? Come and help us. What, what eye was that? Both of them was, for about three days, it has been itching me. But the problem of their eyes, has, it has been yes, for sir. long. Please for come. years. For years. Yes, what sir. kind of condition? I want to know the condition of that I ate something. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. Now it could either be that she has a cataract or a glaucoma. Or a glaucoma. Now, usually. That what? That is glaucoma. Yes. And continue what you are saying, sir. So for glaucoma, usually what happens is there's neuropathy or destruction of the optic nerve. So that nerve is what is responsible. Now, you don't understand life. what that means. The nerve. Listen, don't just laugh. When a nerve is destroyed or dies, eh, it will take resurrection. That one is not healing. That one is resurrection. It's dead. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And now God has healed her. You can even see her eyes. You, you can still see it's colored like red. Yes, I've been itching the eyes for about three and, days. And now? 
when I came, I was not even when, when before we came, I was at home. Yes. So I was telling my daughter that see my eyes fire. I don't know how we go to church because it has been itching, itching in my hand only. Now, so now, she was telling now, me that you have now? one and half, I, I say if I go to church today, I'm going to be healed. Yeah. That is what I told her. And now, no and itching now, again. No, it's not itching me. And if, when I was standing there. I cannot see something very far, but when you stood up, I will see your face and I can see people. Are you just looking? Are you just looking? Give Jesus the biggest shout of praise you can. How long, Pomba? How long this issue? How long have you had this issue? It's more than even six years, Pastor. More than six years? Yes. And just gone under this atmosphere, under this anointing. Listen, every stubborn condition in your life, before you leave this service, it is arrested never to return in your life. Amen. Shout a big amen. Amen. We declare it permanent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Sorry, Papa. Yes. Magdalene insisted that the back pain did not just go away, but she was baptized with the Holy Ghost, which she, was, she has been trusting God for. For a long time. That, that's a good confirmation. Amen. Come. You have been trusting God to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And how did it how, how did it feel like? Every time I play, I'll be, I pray, I'll be like, God, I want to speak in a language I don't understand. I want to speak and you spoke in tongues. And I was just praying, I begin to speak in a language I was not even I don't even know what I was saying. Okay, speak now, let's hear. <laughs> All right. Father, let her be drunk more and more till the end of this service. In the name of Jesus Christ. We, we, we did that so that the battery can be full. Clap your hands for Jesus. Yeah. Let us speak in tongues till the end of the service. Amen. Now, I said that's a confirmation, right? You will understand why I said that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is Sister Mento Anda. So at the cost of the shout, she saw a vision of flags of different nations being torn. So she saw flags of different, different nations. nations being torn. All of, all of a sudden, being like, what? Torn. I don't understand. Apart. Yes, sir. Okay, torn. Yes, sir. Okay. So all of a sudden, a light appeared and I be, begin to fix those flags. God is bringing restoration over Nigeria and all the nations of the world. We declare in this season restoration, 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 restoration of dignity, restoration of glory in the name of Jesus. And sir, not only that, sir, she saw two angels standing behind you. One was holding a sword That's and right. one a golden pen. I like this word, but <laughs> yeah, because we need to we need to destroy some devils in the name of Jesus. It is done. Yes, let's see, let's see one more testimony. Yes, sir. this is Sister Praise Yusuf. At the cause of the shout, she saw a vision of Tamite House falling from a hill. Tamite House. Tamite, yes. Those are destructive demons. You know what Tamites do? They eat. Can yes. eat up. Eat. He said, I will restore to you the years that were. Aha, that's what it is. You saw it being destroyed. Yes, sir. Every devil around your finances, around your life, around your ministry, around your health, in the name of Jesus Christ, it is arrested in this service. And we declare that everything that has been lost is restored. In Jesus' name we pray. I think we'll take all the other testimonies next Sunday. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. Be seated. In his presence. You're the land upon the throne, and all to you we lift our voice to praise. You're the land upon the glorious for you Just 
Father, we give you the praise for all these testimonies. We declare that they are permanent. All the glory and honor be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Mark chapter 16, verse 17, very quickly. Tonight is going to be explosive. Amen. How many of you can feel something around you, something inside of you? Tonight is going to be explosive. Mark 16. Let's get to the word quickly and then we'll rise to pray. Mark 16 verse 17. Shabarata kabelada hasota. Shibrahata kabalate. Zenzofre kefida halahantas. Thank you for your presence. Mark 16, 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will speak with what? Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. Acts chapter 2. Yes, it's showing now. Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And solidly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let's go on. Let's just read. To verse 11 and there were dwelling in jerusalem jews devout men from every nation under heaven and when this sound occurred the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language then they were all amazed and marveled saying to one another look are not all these who speak galileans and how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Let me share with us briefly tonight on what I titled the mystery of tongues. The mystery of what? Tongues. Blashaka Vrandelos. Veroshke Vebili Avrahata Sad. That's what we want to understand today. Bariza kafalade soprende kila brahatas. So for those of us who say, oh, anytime they speak like this, I don't understand what they are doing. We want to understand what this mystery is all about. That's why I said that those two testimonies were confirmation. Is that true? The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. I didn't say people will be filled with the Holy Ghost. I said deliverance and Holy Ghost baptism came. That means before the end of this service, there will be an eruption of fire. There will be a baptism of power in this place. You know what happened in Utah Flame Conference? Some people, there was a lady who spoke in tongues till the next day. That kind of grace will land on somebody today. Parasho kapata, shila prata kapales. Felishka Parataska Paradoya Eva Praruska Pilateres Resco Parato Caposia Ilashka Paratakasco Parata Tongues of men and angels. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Something will fall on some people today. I'm telling you. This week is going to be a strange week for you. 
some of you have to go back to listen to this message again and again and every time you listen the same fire will fall do you believe that now pray in the holy ghost for one minute Paratos kaparate kesuba me prete goska le paburia samaras minda haka rikata shamba iva parata shapala toa rete soton balisha parata kea venke le pratalas aparanda sute bebo kapela le perestu paprata e perus kapa he said they shall speak with new tongues they shall speak with new tongues they shall speak with new tongues if a little boy can receive it then you can receive it where you are shaparata stay a parus kapalata hallelujah just be seated quickly if a little boy can receive it then you will receive it all are you hearing what I'm saying? And by the time we are through with this teaching, you will understand and be able to appreciate the fact that number one, tongues are the dialect of the Spirit. The Bible calls it in 1 Corinthians 2 and 12 rather, it calls it diverse kinds of tongues. Dialect is your language, like your mother tongue. So by the end of this service, you will appreciate that tongues are the language of the, of the Spirit. And then, we will also be able to appreciate the benefits. Because some of us don't really take advantage of this wonderful gift that God has given to us. But maybe tonight, with a little knowledge, you will be ready to take advantage of it and see the power of God. Where we read there, in verse 11, they said, that we hear them speaking the wonderful works of God. is a mechanism for signs and wonders. It's not just in the speaking. But as it is spoken, it is crystallizing an atmosphere of signs and wonders. By the time we are done with this service, you will have a full understanding. And not be ashamed to take advantage of it any day, any time. Are you ready tonight? some of you timidity will fall apart in your life after today i just saw an angel draw out somebody's tongue draw it out like three people that was what i saw everything that has held your voice is releasing it right now every spirit of timidity and fear is falling apart from your life now I can't hear your amen. God did not create us to be quiet though. In fact, when the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 that the Lord God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, the word Lord God there means speaking spirit. And if we were created in his image and after his likeness, it means we were created to continually speak. He said, open your mouth and I will fill it. Sometimes if you don't know what to declare over your life, you can switch in tongues. The Bible calls it the wonderful works of God. So as you are speaking in tongues, you are creating an atmosphere of Shabba. But I'm just saying it, I can feel fire. You are creating an atmosphere of signs and wonders around your life. And I declare from today, listen, from today, any force that has kept you quiet for a long time is broken right now. I didn't hear your amen. That force of timidity, that force of fear, that force of shyness. He said, for God has not given us the spirit of timidity, of fear, but of boldness, of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Receive that impartation of boldness this night. This night. Receive that grace now. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes you don't have to be quiet. Sometimes you have to be bold and rugged. You need to know when to open your mouth. And you need to know when to be shut. I'm praying it again. Oh. As I'm praying it, the anointing is resting on people. That spirit of boldness, that spirit of might, right now, as it comes upon your life, 
every atom of shame, of timidity, of shyness, of low self-esteem, in the name of Jesus, it breaks off your life now. It breaks off your life now. It breaks off your life now. Receive an impartation of boldness. Receive an impartation of power. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Makala kama no ketelias. Me pora katapabra nata kabra deso. Kebrendo kopalabra tasko bratia. Japra to keke la banda kabradas. Some of you after this night, when you begin to speak in tongues, fire, fire will be emitting from your mouth. Your speech will be coated with fire. Your speech will be coated with thunder. In the name of Jesus, receive that impartation. Receive that impartation. I can't hear your amen. When some people speak, it's saliva that comes out of their mouth. But if God opens your eyes, your eyes, when some people speak, it's fire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you have been too quiet for your destiny. That's why you are where you are. You are quiet even in church. Where the Bible says in the presence of God there is fullness of joy. There is no spirituality in being quiet. Most times. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In fact, you can even detect pride sometimes. That's why people are quiet. I don't want to shout so that you not look at me and say I'm crazy. I hope you are not crazy with that delay that is in your life. <laughs> eh? People in the in, in the in the midst in the in the in the face of trying to be spiritual and trying to be comported, they are they are they have they have bottled up the shout of joy that would have broken off delay that would have taken away shame and reproach. But after this night, the fire of God will rest on your tongue. There will be no reason for you to be quiet. When you open your mouth, principalities and powers will know. Hey, shaparata kata. When you open your mouth, principalities and powers will know that a son of God is talking. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that fire now. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated quickly. Three things I want to talk about before we go into the benefit of tongues. First of all, we must realize that it is natural for every tribe to have a dialect, to have a language. All right? One of the first ways you can label a particular tribe in the natural is in their dialect. When you hear a Yoruba man speaking Yoruba, you know that person is Yoruba by ethnicity. Even if he's speaking English, you can hear the betrayal of his mother tongue. You will know that this one is from so 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 place. In Judges chapter 12, one of the ways that Jephthah brought victory uh, in one of the battles he fought was that they put a siege on the road, I think from verse 4 to verse 6 and how they identified the enemy was that anybody that comes they will tell them to pronounce a word and the particular tribe they were looking for, who were the enemies they couldn't make the pronunciation of a particular letter so you see that every time you speak, your tribe can be detected and once you are differentiated or classified according to your tribe, you can be, uh, the, the person will be able to understand the uniqueness, the qualities, the characteristic features that are associated with your tribe. Is that true? If you discover that somebody is Yoruba, you will be able to understand their culture or the person's culture or custom as it has to do with their food, it has to do with even how they build their houses. Many things you'll be able to know about that person by just discovering the language of that person. So also it is in the realm of the spirit. The Bible says that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So in Christ we have been classified into different 
realms from which we function and operate by the Spirit. And these different realms, or you better call tribes, determines our operation, determines our identity, determines our uniqueness in the Spirit. At least in natural Israel, you know that they had 12 tribes in the Bible. Is that true? And every tribe had a particular distinctive uh, um, advantage. When you read Genesis 49, you see where Jacob was blessing all the tribes. He allocated to them the advantages that will be for them. In fact, one tribe, I think that's the tribe of Judah. Based on the blessing, we know that that's the tribe where kingship comes from. And so our Lord Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Because when he was blessing him, he said Judah is like a lion's whelp. So he was the lion of the tribe of lions. God didn't use another tribe. If he had used another tribe, I think there was one tribe that was described as a deer. As a donkey. Right? If he had used that one, maybe our Lord Jesus will not be as powerful enough to combat the enemy and bring salvation. One of the tribes was described as a donkey. But when he came to the tribe of Judah, he said, Judah is a lion. And so our Lord Jesus had to come from there because the Bible says in 1 John 3 verse 8 that for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he would destroy. To, or to be on the offensive, to oppose, to fight, you need a lionic spirit. Is that true? So that is why that had to be the tribe where he will come from. Now that is in the natural in the spiritual we are all in christ but in christ jesus we have been separated into different spiritual tribes and these tribes though all of us are one in christ but these are just different outlets of expressing the manifold wisdom grace and power of god are you hearing me because if God was to clone all of us to manifest in a way, it will not exhibit the fullness of His glory. So each of us belonging to different spiritual allocations so that we can reveal the distinctive nature of the glory of God. So one person can prophesy, the other person has the gift of faith, the other person has this one, the other person has that one. Do you understand what I'm saying? Good. Now, the, the mechanism for this separation is in this topic, the mystery of tongues. From the tongues spoken by a believer, a highly sensitive spiritual man can detect what spiritual tribe, what spiritual realm of operation this one is coming from. You don't understand what I'm saying. So, if you think that speaking in tongues is just making noise, by the end of this service, Nobody will tell you. You will now know why Paul said, I speak with tongues more than all of you. Can we go in? Can we, can we join in? So three things to note. Number one, the diversity of tongues defines the uniqueness of, of a spiritual tribe. The diversity of tongues defines the uniqueness of of a spiritual tribe that's the first thing you should note about this teaching number two that tongues are also an experience exclusive for the believer in christ jesus tongues are an exclusive experience for the believer in christ jesus and then you can add who has been baptized or who has received the baptism of the spirit in Matthew chapter 3 verse 11, John the Baptist was speaking of Jesus. He said, there is one who is coming whose latchet of his sandals I cannot untie. He said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So once a believer is in Christ Jesus and has received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you will find this exclusive reality of tongues in his life. We saw that in Acts chapter 2 where we read they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Also in Acts chapter 10 verse 44 to 46 
why Peter was speaking in the house of Cornelius, the Holy Ghost fell on them, the Bible says. It fell on all who were in the house. And the Bible says they began to speak with tongues. They spoke with tongues and magnified God and praised God. So once you are a believer in Christ Jesus, this exclusive, this exclusive experience is meant for you. Number three, another thing to note is that tongues are not demonic. Did you hear what I said? Say it to your neighbor so that they can hear it again. Tongues are not demonic. Good. So for those of us who may have joined others to criticize, ah, this, people, this is demon spirit. You see, that's why the revelation of the word of God is beyond denomination. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tongues are not demonic. You should know that everything that Satan is doing is an, a near counterfeit. Well, I think it's a poor imitation of what God has already done. Everything that Satan is doing is a counterfeit of a reality that exists in God. So if you say that tongues are demonic or somebody, a witch or somebody, a wizard, is speaking in tongues, that is a counterfeit of the real thing. So when you hear that there is a counterfeit, you should rejoice because the original is close. Is that true? That's true. Tongues are not demonic. They are Holy Ghost inspired. Emphasis on Holy Ghost. Abi? Uh -huh. If it's Holy Ghost, then if it's Holy Spirit, out of him cannot proceed anything that is demonic or defiling. It is inspired by the Holy Ghost. The individual does the talking. But it's the Holy Spirit that gives the utterance. Now for you to even talk normally, there is something here that they call, in layman's language, they call it your voice box. Is that true? As I'm talking now, there's something moving here. That's where your voice is manufactured. Right? But you see, if I don't open my mouth, you will not be able to hear what is happening there. Is that true? So it's the Holy Ghost that gives the utterance, that inspires the utterance. But the individual does the talking. That means that there is a combination between the will of the individual and the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Now, what are the benefits of tongues? Why will, at the beginning of the church in Acts of the Apostle, why did God give this wonderful gift to his church? It was Jesus with his own mouth in Mark 16, 17, where we read. He said, this is one of the signs that will follow those who believe. Thank God he didn't say apostles or prophets or music ministers or pastors. He says, or even prayer warriors. He said, this sign shall follow those who believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. We know of that one. But he also says that they shall speak with new tongues. For Jesus to emphasize on this, then it means it is very important. It is of high importance. Let me give you five benefits and then we'll pray. Number one, the benefit of tongues as a prayer language. Tongues as a prayer language. Romans 8.26 likewise the spirit also helps us in our weaknesses after this you give us an amplified for we do not know what we should pray for of all the weaknesses he mentioned the biggest for we do not know what we should pray for prayer is the weakness there as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered let's read it in amplified translation we'll understand better he says, so too the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness. For we do not know what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. Is this correct? It has to be correct. This is the Bible. It's God that is saying that you don't know what to pray and how you should pray. God is so reverent, is so majestic and excellent in his order. That approaching God with any kind of prayer does not do it. Hence, the reason why many people's prayers are not answered. I'm praying that one miracle service before the end of this year. All I just want to share with you is, 
something God showed me. Five reasons why prayers are not answered. I just need one miracle service to share that and then we'll pray and allow God to move. Part of it is maybe in the way it is offered. He said, but the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. Unspeakable yearnings. Do you have another translation? One translation says, is it inaud inaudible speech or something like that? Just give us all the translations you have. He says, making prayer out of our wordless sighs. Wordless sighs. Shaparada komelia. Devekeliabarada. He makes prayer out of it. In God's understanding, you prayed more. Or you prayed more effectively when you prayed like that. Than when you prayed what you understood. Because God is not limited by your understanding. If God carried your kind of understanding... Then you are in trouble because you and the God you are serving are limited. But God is able to go through Reke Valashki Paradadakis Zeriko Feleretoko Paskavranda. I just spoke for less than five seconds, but that can handle a prayer that would have taken you one hour. The reason why Satan attacks many people is because he knows what they are praying. Father, heal my son who is at home. He has pain in his legs. It's okay. Amplify the pain. But every day you come before God and say, Ah, Father, financial miracle, financial Satan. And say, Okay, we now know when to attack. Because you should know that as a believer, the spotlight of heaven is on you. Spirits are at attention. They pay attention to everything that proceeds from a believer. Because that is the one that God has made son of God and given dominion on earth means that everything that god will do on earth is through that individual so let's make sure we give attention you people don't just like you enter a building you don't know that there are surveillance cameras so also there are surveillance spirits their own job is to keep surveillance 247 over the life of an individual because the devil knows that jesus said by your words you are justified by your words you are condemned so maintain a 24 hours seven days surveillance let's know what is coming from his mouth so we know what to attack and you want to always pray in your language in your in your native dialect you want to always pray in english confuse the devil shakata rekete parando soba ivalakato marike veleske predehandas let him hear what that is let him hear it I'll come to something at the end. I'll, there's something I will show you. He said, With groanings which cannot be uttered. And any other translation you have quickly? But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. There are depths of prayer that you cannot communicate with words. Even you, you know, when you are praying, sometimes you lack words. English language is so limited. In fact, one day I think we'll do a teaching on languages next, next year. And I'll show you different languages with, in their different dimensions. For instance, the Hebrew language has nine dimensions. That means one word in Hebrew can mean nine things in English. So if you are reading your English Bible, you may read one word there and not be able to capture the revelation that is behind the other eight words. English language, I think Hebrew is nine, Greek is um, about seven or eight, English is four. How can that kind of language capture everything? That's why tongues are a prayer language. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 to 15 is a language for prayer. It's one of the modes by which we can communicate prayer in the kingdom. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? This is Paul advising himself. 
He said, I will what? Pray with the spirit. And I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit. And I will also sing with the understanding. Go back to verse 2. So you can understand what praying with the spirit is. Verse 2 of the same chapter. You will understand what praying with the spirit is all about. He said, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men. But to God for no one understands him. However in the spirit he speaks mystery. So when you are praying in tongues. You are praying with the spirit. You are praying in the spirit. It's a language for prayer. Only God understands it. That means that Satan cannot attack it again. That's the reason why Satan attacked the answers of Daniel. He heard the supplication of Daniel to heaven. He was crying for the deliverance of Israel. And Satan was hell-bent on keeping them in Babylon. So when the angel was sent with the answer, Satan said, attack him. How did they know the angel was sent? They knew what Daniel was praying. But when you begin to pray in tongues, the devil is confused. All he's hearing is noise. That's why even you don't understand what you are praying. Except God gives you the understanding because... Don't laugh. Maybe God does not trust you. Maybe if you understand what you are saying, you will just spill everything out and the devil will hear. So it's a code. If you are with me, say Amen. amen. Ephesians 6 18 says, Pray with all, pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Number two, pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Always. With all prayer. Is this a command? Yes. Praying how many times? Always. With all prayer and in the spirit. It's God that is urging you to make sure you take advantage of this. Praying always. One of the things I enjoy doing at, at, at most is praying in tongues. Sometimes when I get to the place of prayer, you know, I don't rush and begin to vomit prayer points. No. I just relax and enter that spirit mode. Before I know one hour has passed. I'm not aware of what's happening there. I'm lost somewhere with God. Praying always. Number two. Benefits of tongues. Is tongues as a medium for worship and intimacy. Tongues as a medium for worship and intimacy. Do you know that one of the most suitable ways to communicate your worship with God to enter into the realm of intimacy intimacy means you and God become one in reality in actuality let me use that word because you are already one with God in the spirit by reality but do you know that when you begin to worship in the spirit that is worshiping in tongues you become one with God in actuality. Those are two different things. You are one with God in reality by default. First Corinthians 6, 16. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. 16 or 18. 18 rather. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. That is in reality. Is it 18 or 17? 17. But when you begin to worship in his presence and just enjoy and, and, and speak in that language of the spirit you become one with God in actuality reality is spirit actuality is in flesh do I need to explain that again so the oneness you share with God in the spirit manifests in the natural that means your physical body is altered the atmosphere around you changes. Just the way you can go around a witch or a native doctor. And you can tell by their atmosphere. That this guy is in league with spirit. 
Do you know that you too as a believer in actuality, you can come to that place of intimacy with God where your literal environment changes. People become conscious of what they do around you because they know that there's something about this guy. In fact, some of you don't even know that your oneness with God, your intimacy with God has grown to a point where literally where you are around people, there is a perfume that comes out of you whether you spray perfume or not. Some of you don't know. Go and interview the people around you again. Have you ever been somewhere before and somebody sees you and says, Wow, well, you are shining today and you didn't eat that day. You didn't eat too. You didn't eat before coming out. In fact, when you stood before the mirror, you saw the wrinkles because of hunger. You saw the pimple. But when you come around, people say you are shining. He has become one with God in actuality. That is intimacy. Now, tongues is a medium for communicating worship and for experiencing intimacy so every time you begin to worship god in tongues that oneness becomes an actuality i'll give you scriptures you'll be surprised at the scriptures i'll give you here first corinthians 14 15 he said what is the conclusion i will pray with my spirit i will also pray with the understanding i will sing with the spirit so you can sing in tongues and sing with my understanding. That is in your natural language. That's communicating worship to God. You can worship God for 35 minutes just singing in the language of the Spirit. The Bible says, what did it say in Ephesians 5, 18 to 19? Be not drunk with wine, we are in his excess. But be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs for goodness sake what is spiritual songs if it's not singing in tongues or is there anybody that has any contrary opinion and no apostle you didn't get it well spiritual songs actually is when the holy ghost is singing or when spiritual song is singing in tongues How will, you know, how will you hear when the Holy Ghost is singing? It's not when you open your mouth. That's why he gives you the utterance. So that you can vocalize what he's saying. What he's singing. He wants to sing through you. And then you can sing. You know, the Holy Ghost can sing through you to a point where you get to a height in the spirit. And God himself now begins to sing back to you. Oh God. These are, these, are, these are depths in the spirit. Can we go a little bit deep today? You can be singing in tongues like he's playing now you can if you don't know how to do you can get an instrumental just put it there and be playing and just singing in the spirit Aradia na ronan se de na nore de da de na gada de 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 Jera na harada de na goba na na da si na bala de kala na de And then you you keep singing like that till God begins to sing back to you When God sings back to you it's not just ordinary songs it's revelation he's singing back to you if you are a music minister at that time, that's when you begin to tap the frequency for new songs. That's how it comes. All these chants that you hear. Hey, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey ya ya, hey ya ya, hey. One more time. Hey ya ya, hey ya ya, hey And every time, every time you hear this chant, you say, "I feel the spirit. I feel it." Have you bothered to ask how this chant came about? Somebody practiced singing in tongues 
and he sank to a height till God began to sing over him. Somebody said, Apostle, there's nothing like that in the Bible. You just wait there. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. God can sing, oh, but it is your singing that will provoke him to sing. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion, let not your hands be weak. The Lord your God in, in your midst, the mighty one, will say, He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with what? Singing. I don't know about you, but if you hear the songs that God sings, that song can make you the most streamed artist for the next two years. Because it came from God. That song can be the deliverance that you are looking for. Psalms 32 verse 8, verse 7. He say, you, you are my hiding place. You surround me with songs of deliverance. I, I, it's not a worship concert. I would have given you tens of those kinds of scriptures. You see where Job said in Job chapter 35, Where is God, my God, who giveth me songs in the night seasons? So tongues are a medium for expressing worship and experiencing intimacy. You sing like that in the spirit until you become soaked with his presence. That your account that there is no money, that the thought of it will leave you. You will forget it. You see, many times the devil has a way of trapping us in the earth, in the realm of the flesh, with all our needs and our insufficiencies. But the Bible says that our sufficiency is not of ourselves, but of God. When you begin to cultivate the habit of praying and singing in the spirit, you are taken from this earth realm to a high realm in the spirit where your needs and your lack don't exist. And you can't come back from that realm and find those lack existing. No. Thy will be done on earth as it is. When you come back from that realm, your natural environment was respond to the new dimension of the anointing with you. Is somebody follow me tonight? Can I give you one more scripture? Psalms 138 verse 1. I saw this scripture last night. I, I almost jumped where I was. I'll read it in New King James and I'll give you in message translation. I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. Now don't think that the gods is Amadioha and uh, all the gods in your village. Wait. Give us message. Thank you. Everything in me says thank you. Angels, listen. As I sing my thanks when he say I, I will praise you before the gods he say angels listen when you sing in tongues you attract the angelic in your life and the bible says that they are ministering spirits sent for to minister for those who will be heirs of salvation imagine a song that can attract angels deliverance is sure Healing is sure. Everything that just happened here just a moment ago, while we were shouting, some angels just stepped in. And that's what you see happening there. You want this is in fact this is a secret to the miraculous. You say, I will sing. Angels listen as I sing my thanks. Remember that in First Corinthians 13, verse 1, it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels so the singing of your thanks while the angels listening means that you are singing the language of angels and paul said that you can speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels when you speak with the tongues of angels when you sing with the tongues of angels you are operating at their realm do you understand what i'm saying powerful medium for communicating worship and experiencing intimacy number three benefits of tongues tongues for stirring and regurgitating the anointing stirring and regurgitating the anointing what does it mean to regurgitate any medical person here what does it mean to regurgitate to bring back bring out isn't it 
Almost like vomiting something that you had ingested. Uh -huh. Do you know that tongues can help you stir up the anointing that is in you? It can regurgitate the power that is inside of you. Do you even know that you are carrying something on the inside? Let's even start from there. Because all the while that you have been living depressed, all the while that you have been living as if nobody cares about you. Do you know that the Bible says that we have this treasure in 18 verses that the excellency of the power will be of God and not of us the treasure is where 18 verses second corinthians 4 7. ephesians 3 20 says now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that is at work where within us the power that is able to go beyond your imaginations and broke up miracle signs and wonders is working inside not outside inside inside so you are God's nuclear power plant no you didn't hear what I said there is spiritual nuclear reaction going on inside of you if you know physics you understand what I'm saying that is one stable way of energy one stable mode of energy now every time you speak in tongues you are stirring up you are creating that reaction catalytic reactions spiritual and semitic reactions there is a shaking something is shaking in fact do you know that the word prophecy or to prophesy in the original meaning it means to speak forth as stirred up or as bubbling forth think of a boiling kettle You see the way all those when the water is boiling you see the way all those molecules are jumping that's what happens inside of you when you are praying in tongues when you are speaking in tongues you are stirring up anointing power you know the bible says in ephesians 5 18 that we should not be drunk with wine wearing the excess but we should be filled you can have the spirit but it's a different thing to be filled it means that what is inside of you overwhelms you did Jesus not say that he that believeth in me as the scripture says out of his belly shall flow rivers you that river came to you as a well of salvation when you were saved John chapter 4 verse 13 and 14 he said out of him shall spring forth a well of eternal life when you were saved it was a well that God put in you but now that you are baptized with the Holy Ghost and you begin to cultivate the habit of speaking in tongues, that well translates to become a river. Even the well can be dry in dry season. But the river keeps flowing. It, what is inside of you overwhelms you. So the next time you go for evangelism, what do you do when you meet a case that needs the power of God? You begin to speak in tongues. They just call you and say, your mother just fainted. Instead of shouting like somebody who doesn't have a God. Hey! What do you do? Tongues. Let me hear you say it. Maratoski. Livabrato kaparagada. Reke veleki taparadakos kembredila. Abrete kobros kaparata. Rike bestopo. Alavatea. When they call you and say your mother just passed out. You say no. No. Shapara. Teketea. Ifre petekeratoska. Rabaskapalata. If a prata kazakrata is a zapa, it is written, it shall satisfy you with long life. No one shall die if premature around me. No one shall be afflicted among me. Hallelujah. That's how you reply situation. Somebody comes and meets you and say, ah, we don't check the first semester result too. Say, Kai, man. You need to register that course again. She parada rike zapa live parada kate e preteke skupra takavada ifratiska palakate ifratasambru tokobo. It is written, I shall be the head and not the tail. That's how you reply those news. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you're a pastor like me, you 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 need to be be doing like that every day. Sometimes they call me when I'm about to eat. Somebody called me from Joss last night with a baby. They were rushing to the hospital. Something happened to the baby. What do, you, what do you want to say at that time? I wanted to eat. That was not a service. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they say be filled with the Spirit. 
unknown to the person it was that that this second revelation about tongues of worship and intimacy it was just a few minutes ago that i caught that revelation when you people left amando rodos as a baby return back to life be filled we live in a world filled with problems you need to have a 24 hour spontaneous response even when the, the news has crippled you, don't open your mouth and make another confession. You will seal it. Start in tongues first. Told you somebody just died in your house. No, he's alive. Somebody just died. Say no. I say somebody just died now. No, he's alive. Then you blast in tongues. That the person that called you will go back and check and the person is alive and then the person becomes more confused you don't know this the devil will make make nonsense out of your life you will accept everything that comes as if it's the will of god stirs up and regurgitates the anointing in you number four benefit of tongues tongues are for personal edification personal edification Jude chapter 1 verse 20 give us an amplified translation I know you know the scripture but dearly beloved I beseech you therefore building up your most, yourself on your most holy faith by praying in the spirit but look at the amplified he said but you beloved build yourselves up founded on your most holy faith make progress rise like an edifice higher and higher somebody say higher and higher Praying in the Holy Ghost. That's how you rise. How? By praying in the Holy Ghost. Personal edification. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, verse 4, verse 5, the Bible uses the word edify. Edify. The word edification is from the word edify. It says, He that speaks with tongues in verse 4 edifies himself. Now, what does it mean? What does the word edify mean? The word edify is the Greek word oikodomio. It has two meanings. The first meaning is to build or to raise, to raise high like an edifice. The word edify means to build or to raise high like an edifice. Think of a skyscraper, one level after the other. But the second meaning will really interest you. It means to recharge or to energize. Can I tell you something? Shyness and uh, low self-esteem and all of that those, are, that, that. those are symptoms of somebody who is not building up, who is not edified, who is not energized, who is not recharged. There is no way you are energized and recharged by the Holy Ghost that you, you will be suffering from depression. or the, suffering from what low self-esteem you are just quiet you're just there no the bible says the righteous shall be as bold as a lion it is a nuisance as bold lions, lions don't make noise around if a, a lion is talking he's announcing that he's the one in charge of this territory that's what it means when a lion roars you watch your documentary anytime a male lion is roaring he's announcing that i'm in charge here in fact, the lion can use his ra to scare some animals. I watched one documentary one time. You know hyenas? Hyenas. I hate those animals, actually. I know God created them, but I hate them. In fact, they behave like demons. I've studied them very well, and that's how demons behave. I'm just I'm telling you the truth. You go and study hyenas. If you know how demons behave, that's how they behave. Even with the way they laugh. That's how demons are. If God opens your eyes to see demons... You heard, the, you heard the, that testimony there. She saw like a gorilla. I hate them. And then 20 of them surrounded this lion. The lion didn't talk. They were just cycling around him and making noise. A male lion. He just looked for one and pounced on that one. Removed the neck. The rest took off. So sometimes when you are recharged, when you have been edified, energized, Maybe one demon will take will be a lesson to the others. One witch. Are you hearing me? 
and from next month eh, by the grace of God we'll be working with a, an original judgmental and killing anointing are you hearing what I'm saying you know they say ember months are times where people die in your own case is the time where all the witches in your house I'm telling you every Sunday yeah that's it that's it there even your dream when you see this one you will wake up that the Bible says that's the kind of bold. Okay, you don't have it on. I wish you had it on your screen. That's the kind of boldness, like a lion. Boldness, because you are edified, because you have been raised up. Number five, benefits of tongues. That tongues are for ascension or ascending into new realms of possibilities. Ah, I like this one. Do you know that tongues are for ascending into new realms of possibilities? That a man by just speaking in tongues has changed level in the spirit. Do you believe that? Let me show you from scripture. Let me show you. Mark 16 verse 17 says they shall speak with new tongues. The word tongues there is the word kainos. K-A-I-N-O-S. Let me explain to you. Let me give you the explanation of that word. It's a Greek word, kainos. It has two meanings. First of all, it means something that is recently made or something that is fresh or recent. That means you begin to operate with the current power that is in the spirit realm as at that time. Then, something that is unused. But number two means a new kind, an uncommon reality. The first one is something that is just made fresh, just like fresh bread. Some of you like going to buy fresh bread, is that true? Now when you speak in tongues, that's what happens to, your, to you spiritually. Fresh, freshness of grace. Freshness of authority, freshness of power, freshness of possibilities. But then the second meaning means something that is new. In other words, something that has not been seen before. So by speaking in tongues, I can tap into a power that has never been seen before. That I've never experienced before. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? One example was Paul the Apostle. After they were commissioned in Acts chapter 13 by the Holy Ghost, him and Barnabas, they sailed to a country. The first country they went to preach, somebody stood and was, was trying to withstand them. Somebody was trying to oppose them, you know, preaching the gospel so that the governor would not hear. This is the first demonstration of the anointing that Paul received after commission. He turned and said, you will be blind for a season. And instantly the man became blind. That means even Paul didn't know what they received in that commissioning service. And Paul continued with that when you look at the end of Acts chapter of, of, of the book of Acts, chapter 28. The last manifestation was that when a viper tried to kill Paul, he shook the viper into the fire and he felt no harm. They shall speak with new tongues. So new tongues connote new realms of possibilities. You see, the, the devil have used ignorance. That's why we play. When we speak, we just think it's ordinary. When you speak in tongues, you are, you are tapping into dimensions of power and glory that has not been seen. That can arrest a legion of demons at a spot. New realms. In fact, if you speak in tongues so well and make it a part of your life, it will affect your finance. This one has proven it, has proven it by experience. So sometimes when you begin to pray, I want you to take note of when you, you see that your syllable in tongues have changed. You understand what I'm saying? You just you begin to speak what you have not spoken before. Maybe before is ba 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 be 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 be. And then as you began to speak in tongues today, it became Mabaraku Barabaruti Baraka Bara. This is not what you have been doing before. Do you know what it means? 
it means that in the spirit realm you have shifted levels oh you didn't hear what i said that's why you're still seated it means that you have shifted levels you just you just moved from egypt to the promised land you didn't get what i said that means that the things that were possible before now you are going to see new kinds of possibilities in your life That's the reason why many believers don't see the power of God. They didn't know this. So sometimes when you are in the place of prayer and God makes you stay for long, it's transition to another level. And then all of a sudden as you continue, you begin to sense, for some of you is that the tongues will become vocal with power. You know, I call that capital letter tongues. Vapata, like, barikata, barata. Let me tell you, it's not just that you are shouting. In the spirit realm, it could be that God has released new weapons. Oh, God. May God open your eyes after today. Archbishop Benson Idaosa, one time, was in a crusade. Was he in the crusade or when he was in his church? Okay, was in a crusade. He arrived at the crusade when he was his crusade. He arrived there when he came there. He saw that they had demarcated the, the ground into two. On one part, people were dancing and praising God. On the other part, he just saw people on the ground lying lifeless. So police had come, they had used a tape, you know, this to, to barricade the place so that nobody would penetrate. What happened was that rain fell and a high tension wire fell on the ground and there was water and it electrocuted the people there. They were lifeless. Archbishop jumped down from his car. Tongues, barataka, sike, leveteke parata. He hit his hand on the ground. Ah, rise up. All of them stood up. Think about, talk about how to start a crusade. That's how to start it. All of them, electrocuted, the lifeless, they stood up. You just think you are speaking, you, are, you, you think you are just playing as you are talking. If God can open some of you, if God opens your mouth, you will see chariots of fire and horses coming out. Do you know? Do you know why your possibilities are tied majorly to your language in the spirit? It's because that's the format of creation. The, the, how did God create everything on earth? He spoke. In Acts chapter 2, he said, they declare the wonderful works of God. One of the ways to know you have shifted level. Check when you were praying. All of a sudden, joy. And then your tongues became vocal. Your tongues changed. Once you see that, begin to dance. Something has shifted over your life. After that, after that session, go on your phone. I guarantee you in 24 hours, you begin to see the reality. So you can go this night and that your lifeless account that has refused to receive money. Keep the phone one side and blast in tongues until you begin to sense that transition. I guarantee you, in 24 hours, in 48 hours, this thing they call miracle a lot. It's, it's not a joke, oh. it's real. It's real. I've seen it in my life, I've seen it in Naira, in dollars, I've seen it in millions. It's not today it started, and that's why it will not end, it will continue here. Even if a small child comes here and prophesies, it is a grace that has come on us. It will continue. Are you ready for the last one? Be seated. So tongues. Give us Ezekiel chapter 43 verse 1 to 2. Ezekiel 43 verse 1 to 2. Look at this scripture. Powerful scripture. He said, Afterward he brought me to the gate, the gate that faces toward the east. And behold, the glory of God of, of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. His voice was like the sound of many waters. And the earth shone with his glory. There is a relationship between his voice, the sound that the voice produced, and the glory that shone on the earth. His voice was like the sound of many waters. I'm still on point number what? Point number five. I'm still on point number five. New realms of possibilities. There's a relationship between the sound of many waters, which is his voice, and the glory that shone on the earth. Now, let me explain. 
We are the ones that give voice to the word of God. When the Bible says the voice of God, it's not only talking about when God speaks literally in scripture. In New Testament context, it's talking about when we speak what the Holy Spirit is saying. Because the Bible calls us the body of Christ. Is that true? Where is your mouth? On your body, isn't it? That means when we speak, it's as though we are declaring and speaking for Christ. It's as though we are giving voice to the utterance of the Spirit that is within. Do you understand? His voice was as the sound of many waters. Now the Bible says the earth shone with His glory. i like you to know that there are two kinds of earth. The earth that your legs are on and the earth that is covering your body. Thy will be done in earth. As not on earth, King James, in earth. You can't say in earth and be doing like this. You should say on earth, isn't it? Thy will be done in earth. In earth. That means that the earth can also be your body. The Bible says his voice was like the sound of many waters. And that voice created an avalanche of his glory that shone on the earth. So every time you open your mouth and begin to speak the language of the spirit, you are giving voice to the utterance of the spirit. As a result, you are crystallizing a realm of glory around your life. That the glory of God that begins to emanate from your life is as a result of your vocalizing the language of the Spirit. Did you get what I said at all? You can't pray in that kind of tongues and walk out and you will look ordinary. No. There has to be something coming out of your face. That's how favor rests on people. New realms of possibilities. People go there and they are lining up. When you reach, they scatter the line for you. And people will say you are lucky. It's not luck. You are operating from a different realm of possibility. Did the Bible not say with God all things are possible? He didn't say to God. He said with God. So when a man combines with the Holy Ghost and begins to speak in other tongues, that glory begins to radiate around his life. And then things that are not possible with men will become possible because he is with God. Did you get what I'm saying? Thank you, sir. New realms of possibilities. New realms. Next time you go and write that exam, read all. But when you are finished reading, activate that language. Speak in tongues till you are overwhelmed. Enter that exam hall. If you have never seen vision before, that's the day you start seeing vision by force. By force. In fact, sometimes God will even make the exam. You will write the exam, it's tough. And then you go back and say, ah, with all this praying in tongues, what happened? And then the exam that you know you were supposed to fail. Whatever happened between the exam time and when the result came out, you don't know. But you came out with a B. That's the end. They ask you, what did you get? We got F. I said, I got B. How? No problem. There's, there's no need to. What will you tell them? You spoke in tongues. They will not understand. That's why the Bible says tongues are a sign for unbelievers. That the possibilities that speaking in tongues will create in your life is a sign to an unbeliever that this one, this one is a son. And your life must begin to produce that result from tonight. Number six, and then we'll pray. Benefits of tongues. Tongues ah, as a weapon of warfare. I love warfare. I'm telling you, I love warfare. I don't know about you, but I enjoy kicking the devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I, I love, that's the, that's the type of prayer I like. If I'm sleeping and I can't pray, just mention warfare. I will check up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know you are running from the devil. Me, I'm looking for where to kick him. Any, any opportunity. As a weapon. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3, it says, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not physical weapons. He said, but they are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. 
so the question is how do you access these weapons very simple on your tongue Malavara ketavadias verevendos kufra bilatavalas Psalms 149 verse 7 He said let the high praises of God be upon their lips Is it verse 6 or verse 6? Verse 7 Verse 6, verse six rather Let the high praises of God be upon their lips And a double edged sword in their hand Praise on their lips On their mouth Sword on their hand Praise on their mouth Sword on their hand Praise on their mouth Sword on their hand To do what? Verse 7 he said to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the people. Go on. To bind their kings with chains. Some of you will go back and bind some devils around your life. Do you know what it means to bind devils? And they are nobles with fetters of iron. He said to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. But this is not the mystery actually. Let me show you. If I say the benefit of tongue is as a weapon of warfare. Let me show you a mystery from scripture. Two scriptures and we'll close. Isaiah 66 verse 6 to 7. Because when you pray in tongues you are making noise. But not noise as in the context of human beings. This is noise that is defined. Noise that carries a particular potential. He said the sound of noise from the city. A voice from the temple. The, wait, before you think it's the temple in Jerusalem, which is not there any longer. Abi, there's no temple there now. It's mosque that is there. You don't know. It's mosque. Know ye not that your body is the temple? Ah, Jesus Christ. The sound of noise from the city. Ye have come to Mount Zion, the city. You think his city has in Beduguri? It's the con conglomeration and the convergence of believers. A voice from where? The temple. Where is the temple? Your body. So where is the voice coming from? From you. I know some people are catching this thing. He said the voice of the Lord. What did that voice come to do? He said to fully repay his enemies. Next verse. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain, she delivered him. That, that, that means when you speak in tongues, you can open up new seasons. Now hold on, hold on. Isaiah 9 verse 4 to 5. So that you can understand what we just read. It's a noise from the city. A voice from the temple. Executing vengeance. When you begin to speak in tongues, it's vengeance you are releasing on the enemy. The Bible says, let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Give us in King James. King James. Oh, I feel fire right now. We are going to pray for five minutes before we go. He said, For thou hast broken the yoke of his body and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. Go on. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. Remember, when they spoke in tongues at the upper room, those people that were outside, what did they say? They were confused. They came. The Bible says they were amazed. In fact, some say these guys are drunk with new wine. That means that to those people outside, the disciples sounded like they were confused. Now the Bible says the battle of a warrior is how is fought how with confused noise. Jele parakata vekando paradikasia, confused the enemy, and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning. And fuel of fire. I like that he said fuel of fire. He didn't say fire. Fuel is what makes the fire increase. So the more you speak in tongues, the more the vengeance increases. The more you speak in tongues, the more the weapons are released. Every time you begin to pray warfare prayers and you are praying in tongues, there is a vocabulary that you will assume in the realm of the spirit if you are sensitive. What is happening is that now you are hitting the devil from undisclosed points when you were praying in english you saw the arrow coming he can dodge but when you start praying in tongues he doesn't know where the arrow is coming he just hit one and while they are there confused he hits another witch he hits a third one he hits a fourth one what will happen they run away 
Did your Bible not say the four lepers in, at the gate of Samaria? When they began to proceed to the camp of the Syrians, the Bible says they got there and they found the place empty. It said, For the Lord had made the Syrians to hear noise. Your enemies will hear noise this night. I didn't hear your amen. Every witch around your life, they will hear noise this night. They will hear the noise of vengeance. They will hear the noise of the power of God. Somebody shout a big amen. Stand on your feet. We are going to pray. Listen. <laughs> one time I told you the story at the Utah Flame Conference. I was here and they called me one day and told me my father was hospitalized. Now, prior to when, prior to when, prior to that time, I'd never seen my father taking injection. I'd been fine. Please, no movement. We are going to pray now. We are about shutting down. So it was a strange thing to say he was sick and then even more strange to say he was going to the hospital. I knew what that was because I knew the attacks coming at that time. The Bible says every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. Sometimes you have to go mad and switch. If the devil thinks he's a madman, let him know he has met a madder man. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What the, you see, the devil will try to pressurize you, make you feel you just begin to cry and no, not me, not me. You touch me, go and touch the tail of a lion first. If you can go. That one, the devil had had enough. Oh. I closed my door. No sun, no food, only water. Shaka parada. No, this kind of prayer, no praise and worship. Oh. Praise God. Hallelujah. No, nothing like that. Capital letter tongues. Face to face with the devil. Rekete parada. Shaka kwa. Atava. Asapa. Ika parada kayeke. Eba la sata. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven by the wind. So drive them away. As wax melts before the fire. So let those that hate God perish at his presence. 48 hours. Makoba. Rekete. I only stop when I'm sleeping. Once I'm awake, I'm in tongues. No sun, no food. When I put on my phone, they told me my father was back home. And it's fine. I said, okay. First miracle has been done. Second miracle. Anywhere this arrow came from. Back to sender. Are you ready to pray? We are going to pray some back to sender prayer here. You see, let me tell you. The Bible says in Psalms 9 verse 16. That the Lord is known by the judgment that he executes. How does God execute judgment? Psalms 82 from verse 1. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. And judges among the gods. He said, defend the widow. Help the fatherless. Do this and that, that and that. He said, they know not, verse 5, neither do they understand. They walk in darkness and the foundations of the earth are out of course. For I have said, ye are gods and children of the Most High. That means that it is when you decide to act that God's judgment can be released. It was a man of prayer that said, let God arise. All the men that saw God in the vision in scripture, they saw God seated on his throne. Isaiah, I saw the Lord seated on his throne. Isn't it? John, he saw the Lord seated in heaven, the lamb by his side. But when Stephen was being stoned, he said, my eyes were open and I saw the heavens open and Jesus standing. Whenever God arises, it's judgment time. In two minutes, we are going to pray. Every projection around your life, Every undisclosed attack, every orchestration of darkness, every manipulation. I want you to release that tongues of warfare. Let it scatter this night in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Somebody, 
Lift your voice. Let's go to the right. Let's go to the right. Tonight. Tonight. Over your situation. Over your life. Over your family. Over your loved ones. Over your finances. Over your stagnated area. Over your stagnated business. Let go to the right. Let go to the right. Over your health. says that when they gave that shout at the seventh time the walls of Jericho collapsed it sank tonight I declare that an anointing is placed on these prayers you just made and this night every wall of Jericho 
every wall of adversity around your life because of the noise of warfare that you have made it will collapse before the break of day every adversary every enemy every devil every demon every every opposition of hell that has risen and been and bent against you to see that you don't make progress to see that you don't become all that god wants you to be before the sun rises tomorrow may god bury them alive may the earth open up and swallow them in the name of jesus The Bible says there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither any divination against Israel. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is written, But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. I decree and declare that from today, as you pray in the language of the Spirit, may the shield of the Lord surround you and defend you against every weapon of hell. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. The Bible says, Taking up the shield of faith, By which you quench the very arrows of the enemy. And the Bible says in Jude 1.20, Building up yourself on your most holy faith. Taking up the shield of faith. Building yourself on your most holy faith. So when you pray in tongues, your faith has become big enough like a shield to ward off the weapons of darkness. I'm praying for you again. If there's anything like spiritual bulletproof, spiritual wall of protection around you, from today, let that become your reality. And I declare by day and night, you are defended against the weapons of hell. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that was spoken against you is hereby declared null and void. Is hereby neutralized. Anyone here to whom a native doctor, a witch doctor, a necromancer, a sorcerer was consulted because of you. If God is God and seated on the throne, and if I'm called as an apostle, by the judgmental anointing between now and Sunday when you return for miracle service that person and the native doctor they collapse never to come up again I declare that they will collapse under the siege of death in the name of Jesus Christ I'm praying again in seven days as you return back for miracle service anyone that has consulted with the kingdom of darkness for your sake that person who was consulted and the person who consulted may the sword of the lord visit them this night may the sword of the lord may the sword of god visit them this night in the name of jesus anyone that will not allow you rest will be laid to rest I don't care who they are. I declare between now and Sunday, they will be laid to rest. I declare that you are heavily protected. I declare that the angels of the Lord are always around you. By day and by night. Be preserved from evil. Be preserved from death. Be preserved from any pandemic. Be preserved from any unforeseen attacks. Anyone here that is going through attacks that you cannot understand or you don't know the source or where it's coming from, may God arise on your behalf this night. You will go to sleep this night, this week, and in your dream you will see God bringing vengeance on the enemy. God will expose and judge that enemy for your sake. In the name of Jesus. I declare that you will always be on fire for God. May your prayer begin to cause eruptions of power in your being. Eruptions of fire and grace. 
go forth as a terror to the camp of the enemy and as a savior to mankind in jesus mighty name we pray wave your hands and give the lord praise father we thank you in jesus mighty name we pray while we are all standing before we go if you are here you want to surrender your life to jesus you want jesus to be lord over your life no movement anywhere please or you want to rededicate your life afresh to him or you are struggling with an addiction a sin and you want it to be broken wherever you are i want you to raise your right hand up so that i can see you raise it high up in the heaven so that i can see you i want to pray with you quickly before we go god bless you i see a hand god bless you god bless you god bless you now if your hands are lifted up come to the co- the front quickly rush to the front quickly so i will pray for you i have made up my mind to serve you for life breathe on me keep clapping as they are coming breathe on me keep clapping as they are coming keep clapping god bless you god bless you celebrate god for souls celebrate god for souls in jesus name stretch your hands towards them those of you in front please put your right hand on your chest if you need to join them please join them quickly and if you're online make sure you take this prayer with us god wants a new beginning with you say after me lord jesus i come to you today i thank you because you died and rose again for my salvation I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, my God, Father, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards these ones. We declare by the authority of your word that their sins are forgiven. We declare that they are born again. Now, let the Spirit of God rest mightily upon them. Let the yoke of sin be broken. Help that lady. Let the yoke of addiction be broken. Let the yokes of their father's house and their mother's house be broken. Let the yokes of witchcraft, satanic attacks be broken over their life. I declare that they will serve you all the days of their life. They will come to know you. Fill them with your spirit and may their lives never be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.